All right, welcome to Super Syntex After Dark. And as I speak, Zach Smith is hopping on the podcast. He saw an exciting game. We'll let him get connected. But uh, let's start with Chad Conine, who also saw a pretty good game. 28-21, University gets the win in their district opener. Yeah, the University Trojans are 4-1, and one, which I looked it up this afternoon. That's their best record uh, through five games since 2012, when they were also 4-1 and one at this point of the season. Uh, for a long time tonight, it was number one for Colleen Chaparral, Kenneth Johnson, making big plays, versus number one for University, London Smith, making, making big plays. And London Smith is, is a player where – they just throw it up and let him go get it. It's pretty impressive to watch it. And I and I was thinking, how can they win this game? And how can they win consistently at all when like just to even get a first down, they have to throw it to London Smith. That's like the only only thing that's going right for him, right? But then they kind of turned the corner. They got a couple of defensive stops, and uh, Ladarius Evans broke a couple of big runs, and then their quarterback Cade Bynum. Mm-hmm. Throws to somebody other than London Smith, uh, Galahar. Yeah. Uh, Galahar. Uh, what was Braden. Braden. Braden Galahar on a slant pattern, 20 yard touchdown, you know, 40 seconds left. And, and they went on a 93 yard drive for that game, game winner. Uh, so they're, they're growing up, man. They're growing mm-hmm. up. Well, and you look at you look at Chaparral, and and I saw somebody comment early this season, one one of the TV people that covers the Colleen schools more than we do, about how uh, in a couple of years Colleen Chaparral is going to be really good, and they game planned University pretty good. They used a little bit of wing T, slot T type stuff, and kept the ball away from University for a lot of the game. But at the end of the day, and and, and I say all that because it's you know I think their second year of varsity, and they're kind of slowly coming along a little bit or they're where you would expect to, uh, that young of a program to be but at the end of the day university took care of business and got that win that they needed um because you know if you start district with a loss like that it kind of kind of hurts your ability to to maybe get where you want to go if you're the trojans yeah no doubt no doubt uh i'm gonna turn to zach because it looks like he's in his car anyway and that way <laughs> That way you can talk, and then if you got to go, just go. Uh, so, dude, Midway gets its first win, and as I was telling DJ and Chad, I picked it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they. Uh, that, that, that second half was uh, was pretty impressive, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, they made some adjustments. Uh, Coach Anderson was very vague as to what those adjustments were. Uh <laughs> Ty Brown was even more vague as to what those adjustments were, but regardless, they made big adjustments. They scored on four of their uh, first five trips or possessions in the second half. Uh, Defense came up big with two uh, fumble recoveries and a turnover on down in the second half. And, you know, they were down 10 at halftime and kind of held them off there at the end. So, I mean, in, in the first half though, Hutto was running all over that defense you know, Midway couldn't – they were just like a like a sieve, right? Mm-hmm. Hutto was just having their way, all the speed. Uh, Midway was just playing zone and just, just wide open pockets, and, and Hutto was taking advantage. And then, man, the second half just – I think Hutto's defense got a little gassed, and uh, Midway started to kind of run the ball. Let's see, true freshman – true freshman. Freshman uh, – <laughs> Lathan, 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 you know, yeah. um, some of the coaches, uh, midway coaches were in the media box with me and we're like, where did this guy come from? And he's like, yeah, we just called him up from the JV. So this was like his first game. No, he had, uh, a, he did play last week. He did play uh, last week, uh, but he had a touchdown run in that fourth quarter comeback last week. And I was just saying to some guys today at lunch, uh, that I hope that they would get him the ball some more, and they did. So, because he he runs hard, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah, he's a he's a he's a big kid too. And yeah. like they have that, and then uh, who else? The um, Longoria he scored a couple touchdowns uh, in the second half. And the second play, the second play of the second half for Midway was a sixty-five yard bomb from Brown to uh, Baird. Right, and it was just kind of a sign of 
things to come for for midway at least the offense in the second half and he you know I think he even said after the game it's like yeah we can play like that on every drive we just just about execution. So. Yeah, it, we don't have yeah. this. We don't have this award on the Super Syntex team, but Jackson Baird is the Super Syntex breakout player of the year. Uh, first year varsity guy. I talked about him, I think, on the podcast last week. Uh, first year varsity guy as a senior. Uh, this is first year playing football, recruited from the baseball team by Shane Anderson. Pretty good recruiting job there. Uh, he's six five. And uh, he just catches balls. And, um, I mean, if he had a 65-yarder tonight, he last week in the fourth quarter, he, he had a 60 and a 65-yarder. So, yeah, big play machine right now for Midway. Man. It was impressive. That second half, man, that's uh, – I don't think – I don't think Hutto is overall a very good team. Right. If I'm honest. But uh, it's still an impressive win the way they did it. Well, and – it, it kind of turned out exactly how I thought it would. I again was talking to uh, my friends at uh, at lunch today, and I said, um, "The team that wins this one is the team that gets one stop. <laughs> one stop. This is going to be a shootout game." And it was, a shootout. but it wasn't that crazy high scoring though. I mean, well, 40, relatively speaking, forty five forty two. I mean, it wasn't eighty-two to eighty, but it was forty-five, forty-two. <laughs> and 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 Hutto was like driving both of those times when they fumbled it, so you know it could have been much worse. <laughs> but we we see a lot of games in the sixties sometimes, you know, like the sixty-one forty-one. I mean, you got what DJ had what one hundred and four points in her game last week, right? Yeah, that's fair. Well, fair enough. It's still a shootout to me. But yeah, and, and the, Huddo's, Huddo's the team that scored 80 and lost. So, right. yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. Right. Uh, we'll see if Midway can build on this. It's a good start, but they started last year 1 0 in district. Uh, the good news for Midway, they're not going to Harker Heights this n- next week. Harker Heights is coming to Panther Stadium. Uh, DJ will get a chance to see that one as Zach and I will be flying to Orlando um for a Baylor football game but um yeah I think and and Harker Heights is not as good as they were last year so we'll see if Midway can kind of build on this I I mean it's well that's a big and who in that district does look that good though right 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 it's there for Midway to not only get in the playoffs but potentially contend for the district championship Hmm. so we'll see we'll see they 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 still have to get better, but <clears throat> that's a good win for Shane Anderson and the boys. So, um, all right, Levi, you were out in West, and you mentioned you uh, almost had to climb out of the state. Almost, yeah, not quite. Uh, but uh, yeah, Trojans get a win. Trojans get a win over the Trojans. Trojans were going to win either way. Yeah, uh, but uh, you know what was kind of the story for West tonight. Yeah, first of all, I thought it was pretty funny because I texted you right before the game. I was freaking out. I was like, what am I going to do with like two teams with the same name? Like, I've never experienced this before, but but it was a good time. Um, So, yeah, to go into the game, I, I was doing some research, and the last time West had lost a district game was October 16th of 2020, and they lost last week to Whitney to open district play. And early in this game, it kind of looked like they were going to lose to Madison. And last year they beat Madison 56 to seven. I wasn't really expecting this game to be that close. And uh, Madison was leading, I think 14 to nine or something like midway through the set or like going into the second quarter, but they just kind of started to wear the West started to wear down uh, Madison just with the run game. And yeah, the, the running back Coy Klish had 171 yards. He was pretty good tonight. Um, in the second half, like West D line just dominated. They had, 12 tackles tackles for loss um yeah and madison just they they had a they had some pretty good skill position players and they were connecting on some big plays but it, the game was never super close in the second half but uh but yeah i think west has a lot a lot to improve on to go from here um i'm kind of like i feel like i'm like the resident small school expert now between <laughs> axel Crawford. Axel Crawford and uh and West and I, I think honestly I think Axel's the best team I've seen so far. Boy, Axel, yeah, they're they're rolling. Uh they have three shutouts in five games so far. Axel does like 23 points or something they've given up on the season. So uh mm-hmm. yeah, uh Longhorns are are going well. 
Uh, Baylor fans hope that's not the case tomorrow. <laughs> uh, Zach, I had a friend who was at the Midway game text me and was like, dude, Huddle's fight song is Texas fight. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> they're burnt orange annoying. too, aren't they? Really yeah, they are yeah, burnt. They, they are burnt orange. Yes. Although the hippos is a much cooler nickname. I'll it is. That. It is a much cooler nickname than the uh, Longhorns. The Hutto hippo. I'd a lot rather see a Longhorn in a dark alley than a hippo too. <laughs> uh, y'all, y'all, have, if you haven't read my column yet, y'all have. We'll have to read it. Uh, it, uh, it's fun. I just basically said, hate the Longhorns all you want. Uh, but I am gonna miss having them around in the Big Twelve. Um, I base well. Here's what here's what I said, Chad. You're shaking your head, but Star Wars would not have been nearly as fun without Darth Vader. You need a freaking villain out there, and Texas is a great villain. So uh, let's go to the girl with the orange shirt on. Um, it looks orange, but it's salmon. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's just the lighting. You're out. definitely a UT girl. <laughs> I I'm not I I'm not gonna deny it. I'm not I gonna deny it. I, I I walked into the newsroom once when you were there with my UT t shirt on. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody well, was and you're roasting a Baylor me. grad. And you're a Baylor grad. I uh, wanted to go to UT, but uh they wouldn't accept me because I was coming in from out of state and okay. I was two points off on my ACT. Gotcha. So all right, we're down a rabbit hole now. Uh <laughs> if Midway does not have the best non-district schedule of anyone in central texas it might be the china spring cougars yeah um you know relatively speaking to their class uh obviously they played a, a 5a number one team in melissa and tonight played a pretty good parish episcopal team right dj yeah, I mean, coming in, I would have told you that China Spring was going to win this game, and we picked them to win this game. I mean, um, the Panthers were, I think, two and three. Their quarterback had six picks in the first four games. Mm. Um, yeah, but he did not look like that tonight. <laughs> he looked like a Heisman winner almost. Mm. and he, he didn't even throw that many times, but when he did, he was going to make the pass. Um, you know, and, and part of it was, I, I think that Paris just out muscled China spring. Like there were, there were times where, especially like in the running game and their senior running back, I think his name was like Maddox Reed. Uh, I haven't counted his stats, but he was just bulldozing through the defense, like carrying them. He was carrying the defense with him to make first downs. Um, and then on top of that, there was just some, some things that, trying to spring some mistakes that they made that they were just hurting themselves um you know offsides or like face mask penalties or something like that um at one point in the in the second quarter um parish was like third and long or something and they managed to pick up the first down on a long pass and um then you know were uh, once again on third down um and picked up the first down on a penalty by China Spring, and it just it kind of seemed like they they couldn't get the stop on third down, no matter get out what of their was going own way, on. It sounds like. Yeah, they they couldn't get out of their own way, um, and special teams has not been the same for them mm. since Thomas Barr. And Thomas Barr was at the game tonight. Oh, and I was like, it must have been. They were, agony. I bet they were wanting him to suit up. I guess Abilene <laughs> yeah. Christian must have a week off or something. Uh, I no, know. I think they're playing out of state and I, I guess they just didn't take him with them. Okay. Uh, um, yeah, it, it was just, he was there. I was like, it must've been agony to watch the kicking game tonight. I think the longest punt they had was in the first drive uh, from Cash McCollum because they were they were the fourth down was forced and and I think they were like inside their own 20 and Cash was the one that Pooch punted it um, they, they tried an onside kick I think after they finally got a touchdown um, at the end of the half and it just did not work uh, I think there was one that was really short that ended up at the 50 and Parrish scored. And it was just like little things like um, just there's really small things. And, and then at the end of the day, I think really Paris just out muscled them. Like they like cash couldn't get a pass down until the second half. Um, and there were a few that, um, you know, were really close and just the, 
you know, that there, there would be uh, safety there or there, that there would always be somebody there to like, you know, they, they, um, and the, they just put a lot of pressure on the Panthers. It I mean, on get, the Cougars. <laughs> it won't get any easier necessarily for China Spring. I mean, uh, yeah. that district, as we've talked about before, is is pretty salty with uh, Stephenville and La Vega and Alvarado. Alvarado playing really good, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, nevertheless, uh, I still expect that China Spring will, will kind of – be a tough out in the playoffs. I mean, they're back to back yeah. defending state champions for a reason, but um yeah. I mean, yeah. we were talking about running backs and, and Kyle Barton's still really good. Um, you know, he got a kick return for a touchdown last mm. week and mm. he's been pretty good defensively as well. And I mean, uh and Cash doesn't just throw the ball really well. He can also run. I mean, a lot of the plays that he was able to make tonight were with his legs. Um, and, you know, got them, got the team out of a lot of situations that, you know, they put themselves in and, mm. you know, they got guys, they got receivers. Uh, there was a really scary moment where they almost got the touchdown, but Cameron Campos came down um, just at the edge of the zone. And so they marked it incomplete and his helmet came off and he hit his head on the ground. So uh, he was out the rest of the game and on concussion protocol. So B said, they're just going to monitor him. And, you know, if he's back next week or not, just making sure he's healthy for when district play starts. But yeah, they've got guys like (laughs) Dean Hanna, who's also mainly a baseball kid, Mm -hmm. uh, but arguably even better at football. He's just a big guy and he can run, but he can also catch the ball. So um, they've got what they need. They just got to clean up some stuff. Gotcha. Well, let's, uh, let's hear from Michael Haig, who was out uh, in Robinson, Texas, and uh, was able to get back to his, apartment to write his story that's always fun um michael i got a chance to obviously read your story and uh rockets were riverboat gamblers tonight going for it on fourth down yeah no for sure and granted i mean i guess situationally it kind of made sense but i mean no one was blinking twice on that sideline especially not chris lancaster and um i think the words i used was there's just such an infectious energy around this program. I think if any of you have covered Robinson, I don't think that comes as a shock. Um, it, you can see it, man. Like it, it's, I don't, it's hard to really even put, put into words. Um, I was blown away. I, I like I said, that, I think that school and that program has been starving for a winner yeah. in football. I really do. Yeah. And <clears throat> well, I mean, they're winning they're four straight wins. Um, it's impressive, you know, and, I think I'd mentioned it in my story and I think was it I don't know if DJ was at this game or if Andrew was there in week one but they were a a, a, a poor second half away from beating university too in week one so mm-hmm. and we know how good university how good the U-Dogs are right now so uh yeah Robinson's playing good football and you know DJ was texting me during the game um their quarterback uh Stanford man he was he was slinging it tonight man and I know she was shocked but um because he hasn't really I guess done that much this season in terms of just his production through the air, but uh, it was good to see him do that. Um, if you're, you know, rooting for Robinson and mm-hmm. uh, I mean, three touchdowns, only one pick, which, and and the pick came early in the game in the first half and he came bounced back and had no problem slinging the ball. It was, it was a good, good effort for Hillsboro um, still missing their starting quarterback. So they should get him back maybe in a week or two or maybe longer. I don't know how severe it is. Um, but I know they've been, I think, without him for the last week or so. And so they're struggling just a little bit. Obviously, would have liked to see them put up more than <laughs> zero points. But uh, <clears throat> no, I, I think I think Hillsboro, Hill, Hillsboro is going to be OK as well. But definitely um, Robinson's definitely rolling. So we'll see if they can keep it moving into district play. They got Waxahachie uh, or Waxahachie life mm-hmm. next week and then and before starting district play. So, yeah, yeah. Uh give it up for Chris Lancaster. You know, anytime you can come in as a first year coach and you have that kind of success, um, that, that will win you a lot of fans in the school district. I mean, for sure. And um, I, I don't know. I think that's a good fit for Chris Lancaster there at Robinson. Uh, you know, we'll see how it works out, but you can't argue with a shutout. Uh I was about to say that uh, they have will have a big one against Waxahachie Life next week, but that, that that's probably one they should win. I'm looking at Waxahachie Life's record, and and they're like 
I think they're one in four after losing to winless Maybank tonight. Mm -hmm. So uh, Robinson has a chance to make it five in a row next week. That'd be good for the Rockets for sure. Uh, Before we go, I want to uh, give out a shout out to the Rosebud Lock Cougars. Mm. Um, So Chad, DJ and I had a podcast this week where we uh, were talking to all the coaches in that, 8-2-A district. It's all local teams. It's a fun district. We were kind of letting them break down. Uh, and uh, there was some good stuff. There was a little bit of coach speak in there. Um, and one of the things that Greg Jacobs, the Crawford coach, says, yeah, we we respect Rosebud Lot. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> you should because Rosebud Lot rose up and beat Crawford. It was Crawford's uh, first district loss uh, I put this in the thing 2020, I think was their last district loss. Uh, so not a huge string. Uh, Mart, by the way, has, you know, got like, they haven't lost a district game since like 2015. So it's been a while. Uh, but, um, yeah, that's a great win for Brandon Hicks and that Rosebud Lot team. Don't you think they're Chad DJ? Yeah. I mean, yeah. they hadn't really been that, well, I guess they lost. They were winless. They were winless coming into the night. Yeah, yeah. They had a close game against Leon. I don't. I mean, well, and Levi. That's a shocker, Le- really. Levi saw Crawford, and I did, and yeah, that's the first time I I didn't know that happened tonight. That's news to me. Um, but I'm not surprised. Like I told y'all, I told y'all that night. Like I was not really that impressed with Crawford, and like I'm not super familiar with this area, and so like when you when I go back and look at past records, it's just like all these winning seasons deep in the playoffs. And you're like, wow, this team is just going to be super tough, super physical. Like, and then like, they just. Um, Everybody has a down well, year. They're, they're, yeah. uh, they're not at the peak of their cycle for sure. They're, no. uh, they're yeah. absolutely. They lost a lot of guys. Yeah, they mm-hmm. did. They lost some hosses and, uh, and, you know, just some playmakers, you know? So. Oh man, I remember covering basketball in January, I think, one of their games, and I just Luke Torbert walking down the court at me, and I was like, "Wow, this kid is big! <laughs> like, how is this kid this big?" <laughs> it made me feel even smaller than I already feel whenever <laughs> I'm covering football. Uh, and these are children; <laughs> like these these kids are my brother's age, so it always yeah, makes me feel so weird. Like Breck Chambers. Um, yeah. He was a yeah. guy that he was a stud for four years for Crawford. Um, mm-hmm. So they're probably still searching for those kind of playmakers. I'm, I guess uh, I, I, I don't think the pirates will be out of the playoffs. I think they'll still be uh, there. Well, I think we'll hear, it's not the last we've heard from Crawford. Let me put it. They'll, down. they'll bounce back. They'll, they'll, they'll uh, get a talking to and they'll bounce back. Yeah. But suddenly their game against Valley Mills next week is a big one. I mean, suddenly. For sure. And that's a big Valley Mills did real game. good tonight, too, right? Valley Mills beat uh, Moody. Moody. Um, and but that game was closer than, uh, you know, I think. I mean, I, th- I thought it was a good effort by Moody. Um, another big one next week in that district. How about this? Rosebud Lot at Riesel. Both 1-0 and in district. Yep, that that one changes complexion, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. Somebody's gonna be two and zero and in the driver's seat for sure. Uh, all right. Before you sign us off, I want to say I have something to say. Yes. UT is Shooter McGavin, not Darth Vader. <laughs> <laughs> Any chance we can get to hate on the Longhorns? Let's take it. I mean, <laughs> Shooter McGavin. <laughs> Oh, you and me next year, Bryce, when <laughs> Texas is playing AM, that's gonna be a fun week. Um, oh yeah. 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 I got a kid at AM now. I got cousins at AM. So. God bless me. Uh all right. <laughs> that's all. <laughs> I think we're running out of steam. Everybody go to bed. We'll see you tomorrow. Uh many of you at the Baylor Texas game. I'm sure Chad will gleefully not me, brother. Yeah, he'll he'll miss <laughs> got it. better things to do. <laughs> All right, see y'all. Bye.